Good afternoon, everybody. It's Bradley McAllister, and this is Spirecraft Live. And, um, yeah, I know some of y'all just saw me a little while ago, right? Hey, it's been a busy day for me out here. And let's see, Don Faulkner's in here, Rich Bullduke, Jeff Peters. Hello, gentlemen. Hope you're having a good afternoon. As always, let me know if everything looks and sounds like it is supposed to. Uh, no craziness or any of that good stuff. Um, I want you two guys to notice, I finally, finally changed. It's now winter out here in South Georgia. We've got mountain peaks and snow-covered barns and everything all up in the window. So now it'll be springtime <laughs> before I know it, and I'll have to put the springtime picture back in. But I was in working on other stuff today, and uh, so I made that change after <laughs> way too long. Uh, let's see... Uh, Jeff, you watched the announcement. That's cool. I uh, hope you joined me there in Milwaukee uh, in April. Rich says, sounding good here. Thank you, sir. Uh, nice looking lathe. Absolutely. And Rich, you know what I just kind of figured out? The, uh, the labels, the, the badging here on the back side, I may just take off and move to the front side. Um, just because that's also where the where the remote control kind of goes and so nobody's going to ever see them back here and i know we were talking about getting some badging out on the front here for the lathe so i'm thinking let's just unscrew these and if i don't tap it maybe i'll just uh adhere them to the front of the lathe and something like that but this is uh the new nova nebula that we brought in a couple weeks ago it's ready to roll Today we are turning a holoform. Uh, I, I said holoform or forms. I do have two here, but I'm sure that I'll only get to one. This is from my pecan stock um, that some of you are aware of. Let me get this controller out of here. Uh, I went ahead and got one piece all, I say all round. I got it to knock the corners off of it. Uh, let me jump you into the overhead here. Yeah, I cut two different pieces today. One end grain and one face grain. Uh, double double side tape. Don't wrap what? <laughs> don't tap. Okay. Hey, Joe's popped back in here. Anyway, so I got one of them knocked into round, uh, relatively speaking, but it's still got some flat spots on it. This pecan has some awesome grain in it, but also it was interesting. See this. This section right in here, where this is still where I peeled the bark off, uh, I was roughing this out with with the spindle roughing gouge, and it did not like this big jump. So I went ahead and finished the level that I'm at here with a big old bowl gouge, which is is my old school way of doing things anyway. Um, so this is an end grain piece. The, as the name states, the grain runs through the end of the piece, and I'm going to pick up a piece here, and hopefully it'll stay in focus. It's a little crazy. This is a face-grained piece. All right? And it's a little too close to the camera. I realize that. And so why would we do one different than the other? Well, in the end grain piece, the grain is going to run all the way through the piece nice and straight, uh, have a nice look to it and all that. And, you know, you cut across the... the on the face let me pop up the uh overlay of five here while we're at it there we go i got that overlay reduced a little bit too um you know this on this piece this is going to be the tenon end and this is going to be the top but so when we cut across we'll be cutting across face grain but when we're hollowing down the sides we'll be cutting face grain now i'm going to jump up here to the big camera because it's just too hard to show you on this guy uh, the outer edge of the piece, so here's all the bark and all the nastiness, and that's why I really didn't want to tackle this one um, first because it was really na nasty, but you can see the, uh, the, the white sapwood out here, and that would make, in this end grain piece, it would make a nice little white cap for the piece uh, when you turned it. So depending on how you orient the grain gives you a different look and a different effect with the piece. This one I think will be really pretty. Uh, it is kind of wonky. Uh, th that's what was uh, left over from a couple of weeks ago. This 
this is the other half of the bulk coring that we did. And so I cut them both just because I had the saw running. Decided to go with the end grain piece, but you can hollow make hollow forms out of either end grain or face grain. It, it technically doesn't matter. Depends on the look you're looking for. Okay. And I'll set this guy back up here. Michael McEwen, good afternoon, sir. Good morning still for you. I believe it is. Um, I'm glad to see everybody popping in here. I hope everybody's had a good holiday. Uh, we did. We went up and visited with my folks for Christmas. Uh, and quick note, I will not be here next Thursday. I am going out of town again uh, a little after the first of the year break. And then I'll be right back because I have to get ready and go out to do the Woodworking Expo Tour. Right? 12 weeks on the road. But I will be here every Thursday. Uh, the schedule means that is set to where I don't fly out until Friday mornings or possibly late on a Thursday night. So Spirecraft Live will continue even though I'll be on the road on Fridays, Saturdays, and I'll be home Sunday night. So life should continue semi sort of normal and all that good stuff. I'm looking forward to doing those shows and continuing with my live stream uh, here. And who knows, I may pop up live out there on the road some too. Uh, I haven't been out there doing straight education in a number of years, so I really am looking forward to it. So that, and I'm going to do all kinds of fun stuff. So that being said, let's get going on this piece of uh, pecan. And I'm going to pop you back in the overhead. And I have uh, a supernova chuck down here just where you can see on the left uh, with a step drive in it locked in there. Um, and a, a rotor 60 degree live center on the other end. So it's just between centers here. And it did, loose, it did loosen up a little bit on the first go and just would spin, but now we're good to go. So the next order of business is still to finish getting this into shape. Again, this left hand, or right hand, excuse me, end is going to be where the tenon is, and this will be the top up here. And once we get things turned around, it should still stay right in the view of the camera. All right, and I need a quick sip of water. Hard to believe I had to turn the air conditioning on in here. But probably that's because I was running around like crazy all morning. All right. So we're going to keep working on just getting this, this craziness out of here. Um, when we get the hollowing, I will be using uh, the Woodcut Tools Pro Form hollowing tool. And right now it has the straight shaft in it. And I did replace the missing grub screw from a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I also have, as, as while I'm at it here, reaching over, pardon my head, I have the bent shaft for it and the slightly bent shaft. Don't know which ones I'll get into. I also have the flexi hollower uh, available. And I also brought out an old standby of Easywood tools. Uh, this is the old number three full size curved cutter. Yeah, I might throw that into the mix. Like I said, I always like to mix in just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, let's get this guy going. Uh, the speed I have it running at right now is 730. And I'm going to reach around here. And I have also, what I'm attacking this with is the 5 8 Carter and Son bowl gouge. Uh, I needed something nice and, and sturdy. And, to attack that big junk piece of wood right there. So we're turning 730. All right. We've got a little vibration in it. Of course, this whole building shakes, guys, sometimes. And for the most part, I'm not too worried about this up in here. But I want to get some more material out of the bottom down here. Take a quick look here. See how that brake kicks in on this nebula? Brings that guy right to a stop. We don't have to worry about it. Um, one thing you may be able to notice is that this end is not true at all. So let's go ahead and fix that up. 
We'll just kind of clean that up a little bit. It helps to know where you're going. Tool rest is a little high. And sometimes I would use a carbide tool for this and just go straight in, but today I think we'll just stick with here with the bowl gouge. It's got such pretty grain in it. Pretty far out around, out of true. Still just a little high, not that it really matters, but we'll go ahead and drop her down. Fire it back up. Getting to flats half the battle. Now this tool is still pretty sharp. I don't really want to take the chance of getting it, uh, sticking it right into that. Live center. That's why I like this 60 degree. You can see there how I can get right up in there and kind of even let the bevel rub on the live center and not uh, hurt anything. So that's pretty true there now. We're going to stop and move things back around here. Love that break. At least now I know where I'm going to, and, and again, my goal here is to get this gone. I'm going to check tightness because again, I am in the spur or step drive. Got a little vibration there. And I can actually see, if you look, I don't think you can see, if you look right here where my finger is, you can see a little bit of the ghost image and that'll let you know what you're looking for uh, to make it go away. There's ghost image from here right on down through about here, somewhere in there. Again we're turning st still 7.30. Now the question I have for myself is what kind of, what's the shape, the overall shape of this thing going to be? So we're, we're actually good here, but we still have a little bit of bark there, or inclusion. So I'm going to use these uh, jaws that I already have here, so I've got plenty of room. Didn't hold that button quite long enough. Two seconds on the on button on the remote. And I'm going to give myself a little more speed here now. Doesn't look like it's shaking too much in the cameras for you guys. Took her up to 780. This is uh, green, by the way. Alright, that's probably pretty close. Just a little bit right there. I think we're going to leave that until we get around to shaping this guy when we get it turned around. Is that not a pretty piece of wood? Right there? And some of the balance I could... I'm going to come in at the top here real quick because some of the vibration is coming 
Uh, from this top being out of truce, I am going to grab a square style carbide cutter and just go clean up that top. Let me see where I'm at here. One thing that will be nice about going on the road is my tools will get cut in half. And so I will only have to look through half as many tools to find what it is I'm looking for. That'll be a nice thing. You know what I mean? Uh, you just can't make that decision when you got too many tools. Which one do I want to grab? There we go. Let's just go with this guy. Raise the tool rest up. Sorry about my head, my visor there. All right. We're going for center axis. And we're just going to clean this guy up. We'll sneak this tool rest in here as close as we can. You can see how much that turns out of true. I'm trying to decide if I want to take this pecan on the road with me or not. It's one of the reasons I'm turning it again today, just to see just how cooperative it is. So I'm just over there in the left-hand corner of things. Okay. All right. And I'm going to reach around and find my calipers. Like I said, I've already got my caliper set here. So let's swap things because we're going to make our tenon. Let's go ahead and make the program 5 and the inset there. You get to see a little bit of the mess in the shop. And that's not too bad. I may, I may go in and... Nah, I think I'll leave it there for right now. Once I turn it around, I might change the, uh, the zoom there. So, you know, the carbide tool makes it easy. Uh, if I was to use the other way, I would be using my bowl gouge, one of my bowl gouges. And I want to check and see where I'm at. So I'm real close there. Um, if you see here, just a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my bowl gouge because that I can't get in there with the carbide tool from the other direction. So I'm grabbing the little 3H Carter and Son bowl gouge. And I'm going to drop this back down. Pretty, pretty piece of wood. Just finish cleaning that up. We'll make that down to next to nothing here in a minute. And with this little little gouge with the wings ground way back, it'll let you get in here and make that tenon pretty easy. Just lightly pick up that cut. Kind of making the dovetail all at the same time. Double check that I haven't gotten too far out of line here. Looks pretty good. Alright, and I'll just take a fuzz off of this. Famous last words.
and hopefully you can see how that just reaches right down in makes that corner cuts so it cuts your bevel and your flat for the most part all at the same time and then we can come in this way clean that corner up as well and we can flatten this up some more just by the little shear straight back out if we want to okay and so we are set we have our our tenon we have our dovetail now all i have to do is get rid of this little nubbing amount of material in here so i'll just take a little detail tool a little carbide detail tool and take 90 percent of that away raise that back up a fuzz And we'll just make a little cone here. Very, very small. And in the overhead, you wouldn't quite be able to see it. But I got just a little teeny, 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 teeny cone there. That'll pop right off with the chisel. All right, this is nice and flat, and we can make sure of that. And just come across here. We want to make sure that it's not domed. All right, and right there's where I'm going to stop because my little teeny piece right here just started to come apart. So as I was making that last little cut there, and I'll show you this, I'll catch it. You can see in my hand there, that little piece. So the nub just started to, to self-destruct right at the time. So that was perfect. Timing worked out well. We'll just pop this guy off of here. Let's see what we can put it up against. There we go. I'm supposed to know where my mallet is, but not necessary. All right, so that cleaned right off of there. Here in the chuck, you can see the step drive, spring-loaded step drive that was holding the other end. So now we're ready to mount this guy up. And then we'll see what we got for if we want to adjust uh, the camera today or not. Open this up with just a touch. There we go. Comes right back in. And in the overhead. Just out of the picture. So I'm going to move this over just a fuzz, which will also help the other camera, or it should. That gets you a little closer, and so now you can see here that we have a, just a, a reasonable gap, and our tenon is slightly off of the bottom. And now that we're ready to go, we'll actually snug that up for real. You can see we still have a little bit of that bark space on there. Now I'm going to slow this back down just to kind of test the speed and see how she feels. So that runs pretty true. Matter of fact, it runs nice and true. So that's all good. Good deal. I'm going to go ahead and continue to tighten that up just a little teeny bit. And I will bring the tailstock back up because now it's time to shape this. And the question is, what shape do I want to make? I don't know. It, uh, oh, wrong one, Brad. Let's go there and take that off. 
One of these days, this thing is going to start to respond like it's supposed to. I may be buying a different app one of these days. There it goes, finally. It's, it's the slowest responding app on the iPad uh, that I've ever seen. But anyway, so I've got to decide what, kind, what shape. Um, ye, you know, I've seen uh, this tool demonstrated uh, with the ends quite open. I do want to roll it around and, and leave some top to it and, and be able to do a little bit of hook work. And uh, Today we are going to drill a hole down the center as well. All right, that's pretty snug. So for shaping, I bring the tailstock back up. Give her a spin. Two seconds. There we go. So obviously... Hey, Dutchman's in here. Jeff, thanks for dropping in. So 500 is um, not an issue. Now, we probably will go back to 500 for hollowing, but let's jump up to 750. I love this pre-programmed of the Nebula, so I just punch a speed, punch a button, and I've got a new speed. And let's go ahead and give this guy just some, some general shape and get rid of that bark. Inclusion. So we'll go back into overhead for that and we'll give you an end shot for the overlay because you don't need to see me. And I'll just go back to this big old bowl gadget I was using before. Now this pecan tree has been notorious for having some really crazy grain in it. Let's see if there's anything going on right down in here. Just got a lot of pattern to it. Nothing super bad. I'm going to turn that speed up some more. But I'm going to do it manually now. Get myself a little more speed down in here. Well, I'm taking this up to clean this up. I was down around seven. We're going to take it up. That's about eight, eight sixty, eight sixty-five. And again, this is green, so it's going to move. So I don't know. I'm not. I don't know what I want to do with this guy. We could put a base on it, we could not put a base on it. We could leave it simple. Uh, it is pecan. Jeff, this is pecan. Green pecan out of my backyard. Still got that little... I needed to stop and look there. So we still got that. That's got to go. 
So that helps make part of the decision for us. Let's see, I, I'm trying not to take him more, any more away than I have to. Alright, that took care of it. That is some fantastic grain. Let's see if I can't do this with slightly smaller tool. Clean it up a little bit better. I'm right up to the jaws right there. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of a flare right there. up here and work on this top so we'll go we'll switch gears here on you yeah Mike uh, some of the those pecan pieces that I, I should pull them out that I've done with the bowl core and with the Max 4 and the uh, just the regular bowl saver. I've actually got back here behind me in plastic bags. I'm letting them still kind of do their their thing a little bit. So the question is, what do I want to do with this shape, you know? And that's what I love about turning. And I'm not, I've never been one to get all wound up on super fancy form or shape or uh, protocols. I just kind of like to do whatever comes to me that day. You see what I'm saying? And so like today, this little top is coming to me. And it's a little dark in here in this corner. But I kind of like that. Kind of like that look. And we'll round that over. Come around the end. Okay. Now being that this is end grain. And uh, so you go pop up here. Uh, one of the things I didn't talk about. It's not going to, when it warps, it's not going to get real warped like if it was the side grain piece. Um, it's just going to kind of go a little bit. It will, it will warp some out around, but um, not nearly as much as a side grain piece. So it, it'll get a little out around. So I think we, you don't have to worry about it nearly as much. And I see, really like the pecan small thing. It's really nice. Yep, it is, Mike. And so I'm going to leave that like that because it's going to move some when I take some of the inside out and I'm going to take some of the guts out then I'm going to come back out and clean up the outside when I've got some of the mass out of here I can turn that speed up some more okay so I think the next thing to do is we're going to drill a hole down through here I'm having fun today I hope you guys are enjoying again if you got questions pop them in the chat column so I've got a forstner bit on an extension Pop in the heat. Come on. There we go. Uh, Forcing a bit on an extension. And so without even measuring, you know, I know that if I just run in, it's probably to all that I can get. 
I will leave about two fingers worth at the bottom, which would be safe. So I don't really even have to measure too much. And this will take a, a, a section right out of the center force. All right. Left our tip in there. And you know what I forgot to mention? I forgot my sales pitch, guys. You can tell how much of a salesman I am, right? The Proform hollowing tool kits, the starter kit, which is the handle and the straight shaft, the intermediate kit, which is the handle and the curve shaft and the straight shaft, and the advanced kit, which is the whole, all three plus the handle, straight, slightly curved, and uh, full bend are on sale at Spycraft. 25% off during the holidays here between Christmas and New Year's. So you can save 25%. That's a lot when you take a, a kit that's about $700 for the whole thing and it's down around $500, uh, just a little over $500 right now. Um, so that's a great saves. I forgot all about that. Again, you know, the non salesman in me, I'm just here to, to uh, teach you how to, to do things and make wood chips and have a good time and enjoy myself. But these, these Proform Halloween tools are on sale at Spirocraft right now at 25% off. Forgot all about mentioning that. So check it out. If you don't have any of these, uh, feel free to, to call, email, text, anything, any questions you might have about them. You can jump on YouTube and see them being used a lot and all that. And um, I think we may be the only people that have got them in stock right now to speak of. Uh, so... Anyway, if I can help you out with getting it hooked up with these, let me know. Hopefully, I'll do a good job with them today and get this guy hollowed out. Yeah, Jeff, the little wonder tool is pretty cool as well. Jeff Peters there is referring to this guy, the little wonder tool. It's a cup-style tool. Carbide or high-speed steel, uh, just on a, a round shaft, and I've, I've got it mounted up in the uh, twin collet handle. Works really well for doing boxes and things like that. Super fun and easy to use. All right. Ah, throwing stuff on the floor. So let's go ahead and see about our hole here. It looks pretty well lined up. We'll just get this out of the way. I love that winter scene in the background. Makes me feel nice and cool in here. You know? Uh, let's go to the end camera for you. Like so. Uh, this is a, 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 a Colt drill bit. A Colt portion of it, which you can no longer, I believe, get in the country. They are really nice drill bits. And before Colt here in the U.S. essentially went out of business, uh, Spirecraft carried them retail, and I made sure that I got myself set aside an entire set for myself. Can the carbide cup bits be sharpened? Bob, you know, you, you probably, technically speaking, I'm pop up here for a second. Technically speaking, you probably can with a diamond card because anything else carbide can be sharpened as well with a diamond card. But it's probably fairly difficult. Now, Grant, that being said, uh, I know the woodcut cutters, the woodcut bits are about thirty dollars, thirty something. Um, so I can see, I can see where a person would want to want to sharpen them. Um, I do believe if you were in ingenious enough would be maybe the right word you could fashion up a method that you could do it um i you know there's nothing that uh, that i'm aware of that's commercially available as far as a jig i know actually uh trend was working on one i don't know if it's come out yet for that type of thing uh, so it's kind of up in the air as to whether or not they are uh if they ever got it done Can you get Colt roto shaft bits in the future? Uh, Don, not to my knowledge. They left the States 
and, and to my I, and I haven't looked either. But everybody that I know, the last time we looked into them, uh, we we bought all that were left uh, that we could justify, and then and I sold off the last of what I had. That, you know, people were shopping for the last of them, and I don't know if you can get them out of Europe still. I would think you could, but there was some turmoil in, in uh, Colt Riss, the, the corporate structure. Don't know what came of it. Uh, really not my business, and it's over there, so I don't really know exactly. Uh, what happened and if you'll be able to get them or not um, but they they do work nicely and they were it was great to have them when they were around yeah you only have a small set yeah I, I get it uh, I understand that's why I say I grabbed and I wish I had some of the bigger ones I, I wasn't I didn't have enough foresight I would love to have had you know two two and a half and all the bigger three whatever the, the biggest things they had and I should have but I of course you know if I had a crystal ball well it'd be a different world so, um, to my knowledge, we can't, there aren't anybody, any vendors in the States uh, carrying them, Don. If I hear of them, I'll let you know. Okay, let's go back to 4, 5. And I will put on my mask just in case something were to happen. And I am going to slow this back down and drill around 500. Hopefully my mask didn't get in your way. So it's easy drilling. Okay, and I'm actually going to give myself a little extra depth here. And I'll just pop this in and out, pull in on the tailstock. See if, my, see if my Australian connection. Yeah, I need an Australian connection. And if they went to, uh, if they went to France, because wrist was out of France, if they went to France, we need a French connection. Derek Cadam says, Infinity Cutting Tool still has the Colts available. Okay. Good to know, Derek. Do they have a, a pretty good complement of sizes? And maybe they're bringing them in from, from Europe. From Germany. Thanks for that inside information there, Derek. Appreciate it. And I'm going to stop right there, since I'm pretty well quilled out. This is a good looking piece of wood. Now, from my, you know, thinking about what I want to do with shape and all that, I'm going to go ahead and, and bowl gouge this down inside. We've still got our recurve out here. So I think we'll make a pretty good size hole in this guy, our opening. And I'm just going to take my tailstock all the way off. I don't think I need it anytime soon for the rest of the day. And another thing I'm going to do, because this headstock does rotate, I'm going to go ahead and rotate this guy a little bit, and then 
it'll make it easier for me not to lean in and then and as long as I keep it in the camera shot for you there um, that should be good and you should be able to see me working inside and outside and around and about all that good stuff and reach over here make sure everything's still nice and snug on that All right. I don't know how the weather is uh, where y'all are, but outside today, it's actually, I've got the air conditioner on. It's not really that cold, but I had the heat on. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day out, a little breeze, a lot of cloud in the sky. Pay no attention to that picture in the window of cold and snow and all that stuff. Um, Get my smaller bowl gouge again, and let's attack this guy. I always forget I got I have to learn to hold it for two seconds, and let's pop back up to 750 for this. Now this can be done with the Holloman tool, but I'm just old school, and I like to I like to control the shape of this inner bell, if you will. I see that the overhead camera is a little out. Let me see if I can adjust that. And uh, we're just going to leave that spin, and I'm going to walk in here and see if I can move that overhead camera just a little bit. And I can also see the comments a little better. Michael says 45 and overcast there. 41 and raining Washington State. Well, I feel I feel for y'all. I really do. Let me see what happens when I do this. There we go. That's a little bit better for that camera. What I don't have is these controls available on my surface out there to adjust that camera like that. I wish I did. But it's not too far away. Okay. Back to work here. How are we doing on time? We're all good. 153, sorry, 2 o'clock. Oh, yeah, we're all good. So once I get down to equivalent of the top of the, the outside, I'll probably go ahead and switch over here. You know, it's just, it, I, I tell you, to be quite honest, it's, um, it's hard to break old habits. So pre-fancy Halloween tools in, in my turning time, I, I would have gone just as far as I possibly could uh, with a bowl gouge. It's just, that's what I had. And then I had an old arm brace. I still do arm brace hollower, which will beat you to death. Uh, and so I just got used to just hollowing as far as I possibly could with a bowl gouge, and I'd go to a bigger bowl gouge until I got my arm brace tool out. So that's just kind of me. Uh, you know, 
like I say, I could start. I could have started sooner with the Proform tool. It's just it's ingrained in my head. Well, if, if I got a tool in my hand, whatever it is, and it's working, I'm going to go as far as I can go with that tool. Uh, why change? <laughs> because I, you know, I used to turn a lot. I mean, all day, every day, and sell in galleries and craft shows and all that stuff. Um, and so time was money. And I didn't change tools if I didn't have to. Because changing tools took time, and if I could just keep on going with whatever I had, that's what I did. Um, and that, that doesn't, it doesn't go away. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to leave the brain, uh, quite honestly. It kind of hangs around. I mean, it's nice to have all this, this uh, dedicated, maneuvered type of tools, but it does take a little getting used to. Let's see if this is adjusted for this. I think I have used it already. And I'm going to move this in a little bit for now. The less overhang, the better. Okay, and so what I'm working on here is setting up the iron tool gate. And the iron tool gate, iron's tool gate, excuse me, it's a one inch post. It has a stop collar on it. So once you set your stop collar, uh, you don't. You just drop it in, and you're all good to go. Yeah, I can't say that I'm sorry. I missed that winter storm that uh, a lot of the country had. We here in, and I'm you know outside of Savannah, and we weren't here, but it was down in the upper teens, and I had one hose bib freeze on the outside of the house. Uh, we were up visiting with my folks in North Georgia and it got to be in the single digits I do believe okay so this actually wants to go this needs to get raised up so this has not been changed since I switched over to the nebula so we're gonna make a little adjustment here find the right Allen wrench and I think it's one of these will do the trick. There we go. So it's that one. And we will get this guy set up to where it's cutting at about center or so. Yeah, so the no snow in my life, of course, is going to go away here shortly when I get on the road. Now, Atlanta is the first show with Woodworking Expos, and then Charlotte, and then I think we go up to Springfield, Mass. So I've got till about the end of January, early March, before I have to get cold. Okay, that looks about that looks about right. And again, if you're not familiar with this tool, it has a hook style uh, cutter on it, and then it has a brass what they refer to as a gauge on the top, and that gauge is adjustable, and it leaves just a slight uh, gap here for your cutting edge to cut. And it is adjustable, and the tool can be sharpened with a diamond card. Okay, and if you need lot, if you need the long reach, you can add a second handle here on the end. So this end matches that end, and you can have 40 inches of handle if you are necessary in the need of. Okay, let's see what we got going here. We have 750. I'm going to take this back to 500. It, it likes working at a, you know, these cutters like to work at a slightly slower speed. Uh oh, I hit reverse by mistake. <laughs> All right, there we go. So 
So hopefully I'm out of the way. I'm leaning up against the lathe because I like to do that. And I'll just start working my way down through here. And you can see you get really nice shavings come off. I mean, these are big, long. Get that out of there. It does a super job, okay? And you just take your time. And I do have my, my compressors unplugged. I, I may run. I may end up running next door and unplugging it or plugging it back in. Just to clean, keep this cleaned out. And I'm going to lift this up so I sound a little better. This makes it very easy. The tool gate, uh, this tool rest, I when I first got this this tool and started using it, I didn't use the tool gate tool rest. I was just loving or loving. I was looking looking at the uh, Michael's comment, loving the, the ribbons. Um, I was just using a standard tool rest. And this gate with its hook feature and tool, the tool rest down in there, it gives you great leverage. And I'm actually going to move it over, I think, just a little bit. Um, and once you get comfortable with it, uh, it's, it's really, really nice uh, to have the extra leverage. Again, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see if I can do what I need to do without getting in the shot with my shoulder for you guys. And having drilled that big hole down the middle makes it very easy. And I, I'm going to take a, a two seconds, well, a minute, a minute. I'm going to go next door where the compressor is located and plug that compressor in so that I can use compressed air to blow this out. Although I should be able to stay on the microphone for you. I just have to go into the next building here at the compound. Of course, it'll get really loud when the compressor comes on. So I'll apologize for that. When this thing cranks up, it's going to be really noisy. Maybe I can get out of the realm here. There, that one. Gosh, it's amazingly nice out. It'd be a nice day to sit out and have a sandwich and a cold drink. Okay, back to work. How much of the cutter, how do you know how much of the cutter should be exposed? Well, Don, it's, it's kind of a, uh, the first thing I found was that it, when it comes from the factory, I'll pop up here for a second, uh, when the factory setting is pretty good. Matter of fact, it, I messed with it just to see what happened, and there is, I, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, um, there is a, a reference amount, it's, it, it's very slight, and they have a new video out that Phil Irons did, I'm pretty sure it's out, uh, talking about adjusting and sharpening the cutter. Uh, yeah, I'll rub it in, Michael. Um, and, and I found that it's just a very, I mean, it's, it's I, I wish I had a number for you, Don, to, to tell you exactly just how much you want to overhang. And it also depends on the wood. Um, things like that. So, you know, experiment with it and you can leave the gauge in. If you, if you start adjusting it, you know, you run the risk of getting too much. And that's what I did. And I had to kind of get it back to where it was. 
Um, and you can, uh, you can sharpen with the diamond card without it affecting uh, the gauge to, to a degree. Eventually you're going to wear that to where you're going to have to move the gauge. Um, and again, I wish I could tell you off the top of my head what that amount is, uh, but I just don't have a good clear answer. Uh, if I told you anything about how much it is, I, I wouldn't know that it's right uh, to tell you, okay? Uh, and I don't want to tell you wrong, but what I will do, uh, because I should know this, I will go find out uh, if there's a reference number in thousands or anything like that um, to, to set it at. And again, I think it's really going to vary depending on possibly your style, your technique, and the wood you're turning, uh, cutting with it. So there's some variables in there that I think take away the, there's one absolute, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, what is the tool we're discussing? Uh, we're discussing the Woodcut Tools Proform Hollering, uh, Fred, with its gauged hook cutter head. That's what we're discussing. And that's what we're turning with. And going back into here now. And now that I have my compressed air over here, we can keep things cleaned out. All right. And I'm going to move this back over here just a little bit. It's a shame when I look down inside there, um, the pretty wood that's getting thrown away. And let's go back to the end shot there, no, five shot. There we go, on the end. Yeah, Joe, I like your answer. I just said it for what worked for me. Um, it's, it's, it is one, really one of those kind of got to play with it a little bit kind of things. And the, the, you know, out of the box is pretty good. And I, I adjusted out of the box and after a while and messed it up. And, and one thing, the side grain you cut really with the side and the end grain you cut with the tip. Um, something to keep in mind as well. And I say I, I know that there is a fresh video out from Phil Irons who's, who helped develop this. He's used it for like 30 years. So he is the master with it. Um, and I will look and see if that's what I have on the website for the tool and if not I will try and get it on there if I can find it or I'll get it from Woodcut Tools. Um, I was hoping that maybe Dan was in here today from Woodcut. Sometimes he pops in but it's a little early in New Zealand because um, he, he could answer that question right off the, the bat. Alright let's fire this guy up again. Try and keep my shoulders out of the way. Plenty of chips coming out of there. And I'm just kind of pushing my way down into that center hole. And then coming back up the wall. And of course hollowing is all by feel. That's the one thing about it. Because you can't see what you're doing down in there. Yeah, Mike, you know, I think you're on the right track uh, as far as, you know, what type of wood and how much cutter is exposed. And it'd be quite, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time with this tool. I don't get a lot of time these days. I wish I did. When I, was, when I first started turning, and then especially when I first turned hollow forms, 
Uh, I turned like a dozen holoforms at, at, for my first go um, with my old tool. And I got it figured out. By the end of the week, I had a pretty good clue. So I'm looking to see when I'm down in here, I'm actually, I think I need to raise my tool rest up just a fuzz, believe it or not. So I'm going to raise this up just a little bit. When I get down all the way down in the hole, um, I have a little more trouble. So I'm going to raise this up and see if that makes a difference. I'm going to do two things at once here. See if that makes a difference. Yeah, you'll know when you get too much, because uh, it'll it'll little it'll literally be grabby um, beyond what you're comfortable with. So raising it, raising up the tool rest there, help me with down in the center. I was just a little low down in there and, and wasn't cutting like it should. And I, I mean, I raised it up less than an eighth of an inch. And I'm, and I'm just about up to the handle here as it is. So I'm about, my two fingers is my depth in there, and so when the tool gets there, all the way in, that'll, I'll be as deep as I need to go, because I like to leave a little bottom in them. Now I don't have a light, like uh, a lot of folks will run a light and look down in there. I have a great story about a light at a live show was pretty funny, at least in, as far as I was concerned. I was turning, I can't even remember what I was turning. I know where it was, it was in New Jersey. And I had a light up on the headstock. I gotta, I gotta jump up here for you. I had a light up here on the headstock, one of the big magnetic lights. And Something, I don't know if it was vibrating or if something uh, popped loose, but it fell off. The light fell into the piece that was spinning, spun around with it, ripped the cord in two, the electrical cord. The electrical cord started arcing uh, without tripping the breaker on the circuit for the, for, the, for the stage. And some guy in the front row got up and just threw his stuff down and walked out. Talked about how how dangerous this and that was, one thing or another. And I think all I did was get the light tangled up in the lathe while the piece was spinning. I don't know what he was upset about. Um, I do remember. I'll never forget that particular event. And I don't think I've <laughs> I don't think I've run a light since, to be quite honest. Jump back in the end here. All right, go on down inside here some more. So we'll be able to switch over to the hook tool here pretty soon. Now another thing that you can do, I'm going to stop this. I don't have a second handle in here, um, but I want to show you this. I'm going to back this up. You can put the handle... Where can you see that? You can put the handle, in, there's two notches in this gate. There's the small notch in the bottom and the bigger notch. You can put the handle in here, run the tool all the way, the tool shaft all the way up inside, right to the very end. Put a second handle on the end like I was talking about out here. Have a 40 inch handle and everything is sitting so it does, you don't get any flex and you have all the leverage in the world with the tool sitting, the whole tool handle sitting in this gate. Uh, it's pretty cool.
All right, a little bit more to go down in there. And I'm going to move this in a little bit closer. Take away some of that overhang. All right. So I'm actually just going right down. This, I've reached the bottom of what I drilled. And I'm trying to get just a little bit more out of it. All right, stop and clean her out. Good deal. Let's tell you what, let's go ahead uh, for sake of demonstration and let's go ahead and change that cutter. So I am going to rest my tool like so if this will work. And change out the shaft. Just loosen up the screws. And I had it pretty far down in there. Pops right out. Now the curve tool has a flat on it. The other one is round all the way along. And this may be the one, I may have played with this one some. So this may be a little aggressive. We'll find out here real, real quick. As Mike says, you'll know because it'll get all kinds of grabby. So there's the curve tool. That's going to allow us to reach in around the corner. So I need to back up my tool rest just a little bit so that I can start to reach around here. Okay. And I want to I want to make sure that when I'm all the way out, I'm still on the tool rest without being in the curve. So that's why I, I moved it out. All right. Let's see how this is set. This will this will answer a lot of your question there, Don. Let's we'll see how I how it does for me. Make sure I'm not in the way. Good. This lets me reach right around the corner there. No problem. And realistically, I think what's going to happen is you're going to end up coming back with a straight tool. After you get around this, cor this corner here, you're going to come back with the straight cutter and pick that up and clean that up. And we'll pick her up again here. I mean, it works super efficient. And there's, you know, it's, um, principle is the same as if we were using, say, this Easywood tool, but we don't have any way to put a tool like this in this, I guess you could put it in, but it's got to stay flat, but it reaches around the corner. But this has a this giant handle on it and all kinds of leverage. So it's pretty reassuring. What 
I would say ultimately that I would do is, is have one handle with a straight and one handle with a curve cutter and I would go back and forth. This makes a lot of chips in a hurry. Yeah, that's what I, I would go back and forth because I have to figure out how to get that other cut right there. I'm making a little bit of a wall. So let's see if we can take care of that. There we go. I just had to find that lip and pick up the cut there. Very nice. It reaches, it goes right around the corner there, follows the curve nicely, easily, and right out to our change in profile out here. Just for fun, let's move this over just a tick and see what the change in profile feels like. I mean, sure, you could move the you could move the banjo as well. So you got all the adjustments in the world. Um, as you go real deep, you could move this inside if the hole was big enough. Lots of different options. So this is going to make me come over further over into the picture. I might get a shoulder in here. For my preference, I actually like being back a little bit closer to the center here. I'm going to move it back over. And it took a lot of wood in a hurry there, more than I was really wanted to. Wasn't the problem. Boy, the inside of this thing is gorgeous. Too bad we can't see the inside from the outside. So I'm right up against that lip there. And so you, you'll know, I mean, everybody's going to have their own way. I want to show you how I am holding this tool. So I'm going to pop up here. I've got the tool, and this is, this is me. I've got it levered, cantilevered underneath my arm so that I can lean down on it. I have good leverage from my shoulder. Okay, see, so that's how I'm holding the tool. So I'm just sitting down on it. Levering, levering right off of the tool rest underneath my elbow, and that's just how I hold uh, any of my hollowing tools. It's just the habit that I developed. But I wanted you to see. Just in case you were curious, just how I was holding that tool. What chuck and jaws are you using? Uh, Jeff, it's a Supernova 2 with the 100 and 100 millimeter jaws is what's on there. And I'm tempted to go back to the straight tool now because I've come around the corner here as much as I want to. So I'm going to switch back to the straight shaft here real quick and see how that works for me. 
Let's move this over here. See, I'll use the lathe as my holder. And see if I can't jump in and take away that wall that I've cut. Yeah, there are the hundreds. Back to the straight cutter. Actually, the straight cutter has a flat on it too, but I'm running it up in there. I don't want the overhang. I should take some goo, goo gone and get that spooge off of there. That gives me enough reach to get all the way down to the bottom. All right. And then I'll pop you back into the end camera. End camera is five. Come on, controller. There we go. And again, we're only turning 500 RPMs. It doesn't like uh, a high speed. Slower speed is your friend. And that, this works well because now I can get in here and take away those ledges that I made. And I'll clean that out and I'm going to move the tool rest in a little bit closer. Now if I wasn't, you know, talking to you guys, this would have been long since hollowed out. Now I am going to move over and it's probably going to put me a little bit in the camera's view. And so if I lean over on you, I apologize. Yes, the upper notch is sized for the handle, uh, Mike. So if you were to, if I was to run the shaft all the way in, then I would be, I would have that in there. What I could do, but it'll, it'll move it too far. I'd like to get my arm back underneath this because of what I'm doing is I'm having to reach over and I'm probably in your camera shot. And so let's do that. Let's, um, just for fun, let's, let's do this. We're going to adjust this. Of course, you have to change... I say, of course, I'm not going to change the height. I'm going to experiment here. And we're going to back up and just use it up in there. All right, just for, just for fun. Well, Mr. Peters, you can, you, I know where you can get one. We have about four of them right now. So you can't do that. I need to have another handle on because that's not quite enough control. So I'm going to come back in here. Come back over to there. And I'm looking at the see, see I'm looking at the outside and just kind of gauging my wall thickness. I'm gonna have to go ahead and run this up closer. Move that around. Clean out the chips. It's amazing. This is it's a chip making machine, that's for sure. 
Let's get that right up on there. Take away a little ledge that I made in there. Alright, so that's the basic shape. I mean, it made pretty quick work. I say, you know, I spent a lot of time talking and chatting and making noise. And there is, um, pop up here, come on. Uh, there are also, so I've got some ridges in there, right? And this is one that the hole is big enough that you can see in there. There is a scraper kit, so you can change out, take the cutter head off, it just unscrews, um, like set off the straight shaft or even the curved shaft, and unscrew the cutter head. And I'll show you right. Right here, you take the cutter head out, and there is a scraper shaft, scraper, scraper attachment. Uh, I have not used it. Now, I know Joe is in here, and Joe, I think you have the scraper attachment. I don't know if you've used it or not. Um, but it, there is one that's available, and then that would allow you to go ahead and clean up, you know, down inside with your, where your tool marks are um, from, the, from the tip that's been cutting. So that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. I mean, that, that was easy. And again, I thought I've been chatting away and having fun. How are we doing on time? 2.32. Good deal. Put that back to straight. Like so. And I think just for fun, just for, to wrap this up, I'm just going to kind of clean up this outside a little bit more. Take this iron gate out of here. So that is a that is a handy guy. You know, it has the one-inch tool post with the, the sleeve on it. Curious to see how much this has moved. See, now that I've relieved the inside a little bit, only played with it a little. Gotcha. Um, I, yeah, like I said, I haven't put one on the tool, so I, I don't have a, a, a point of reference with it. And this is something I haven't done in a long time. Instead of going over to the grinder, I'm going to just take uh, this is a diamond card and a little bit of lapping fluid and just kind of hone up this tool real quick some people swear by it some people don't do it at all hold the tool still and it just freshens up that edge Without going over to the grinder, save yourself the trip. Just hold the card flat on both, both sides. And you can see where it's cutting, cutting on the top edge and the bottom edge there. It's not enough to take away the hollow grind that your wheel put on it. But it is enough to clean it back up. Spot right there, and I'm using the 600 grit. Uh, if, if anybody's wondering, this is a 600,000. I uh, just on the 600 side. Paper towel, real quick, because we know that the tool doesn't stay 
ultra sharp all that long. So we give it just a little clean up like that. All right, put our mask back on, style this guy up, and see if we can't just for fun clean it up a little bit. Um, if I knew where my file was, if I knew where a lot of things was, it's going to be nice going on the road because my tools will get cut in half and I'll be able to find things. I haven't seen my flat file in a while. I like how that rhymes. Um, to to uh, smooth up my tool rest. But, we'll go with it. Do, 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 do. And I'll pop you into the overhead. And I'll go you in for that. Okay. I mean, the shape's not bad. Did I hit the brake? How did I hit the brake? Actually, I want to go to 750 anyway. There we go. Craig says he's ready for the woodworking show in Indy. Well, you'll get two of them this year. You'll get the woodworking shows and you'll get the woodworking expo. Just working on that shape and then actually another tool the fill iron scraper I might grab another one that will help shape this up and I haven't used it a lot either I've, I've played with it and it's it's this is just what it's for now my walls are plenty thick so don't worry about the amount of material I'm taking off of here Don, yes, I'm doing just the woodworking expos and not the woodworking show. I am just doing the expos. Okay, so I've got here the scraper. Again, the fill iron scraper. Fill irons is very, very close with woodcut tools. And again, it's another one that you can tune up with a diamond card. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and use the big one that I've got here. And I'm going to take the burr off the top. And I'm not uh, well practiced with this yet. It's, it's one of those tools that, when, for me, right now, when it works, it's awesome. Uh, wh when I, I should rephrase that, when I use it properly, it's awesome. And so now I'm just coming and stroking up the face of the tool with the diamond card. But it does take a little getting used to, if you will, and figuring out just exactly what angle uh, to work it, work it at.
and you have the beauty is you have three sides to work with the issue i have with this and it's, n it's nothing about the tool it's my right hand i can't hold on to this round shaft very long or very well without a tool handle because my hand is pretty well shot they want to do surgery on it but they tell me i'm out of, i won't have my right hand for six weeks and i just don't want to go there and it's a 5 8 shaft and i just don't quite have a handle uh hanging around all the time to stick it i need to put it in a handle and it's got a little spring washer on it and if you do it just right you can move it if you find just the right tension you can still move it but not have it move when you're using it and you can switch to a fresh side okay we'll try that like that That turned around. Drop this tool wrist down a little bit more. Decide where I want my banjo handle. About a 45 degree angle is what's recommended. And then you just kind of have to work with it. To find that sweet spot and it does it makes a nice cut when you get it just right like that and it will clean things up very nicely trying not to get that touch like that in the bottom because I got that recurve down in there now It does help refine your shape. You're going to have to be careful reaching up in that corner. I'll try and get up in there with just the corner of the cutter. And now I'm going to just take and use it to round over this corner. You know, it kind of had a sharp edge to it. So I'll just play with that profile right there a little bit and smooth that out. See how easily it took the, the sharpness out of that corner? Uh, can you grind the negative rake on it? I'm certain that you can, Jeff, uh, if you're so inclined. It certainly could. And other than this right here, where I, I got to figure out how to deal with that, that essentially took all the tool marks out, rounded that over very nicely. Let me see if I can't get down in here and do a little better down here on this end. Need to give myself a little more room to work, I think. There we go. And that cleaned that up really nice. Now, I'm not going to try and fix this little spot with that. It's just too, too grabby in there. But I will come in with just my little teeny bowl gouge here and right up to the jaws and just clean that up and see if I got there was a little bit of torn torn grain there 
And so that's all clean now. So this guy is nice and smooth. All right, it's not torn up anywhere. That looks good. So now all we have to do is let it dry. All right, and here is, um, let me show you the whole piece because I changed that so you could see. I'm going to jump into the control room here real quick, and then I'm going to change up that, that angle on that overhead shot. Bring that back over so you can see the whole thing. I mean, it's a simple shape. It's nothing uh, to win awards. But it is a nice shape. Put you some flowers in there and stuff like that. Yes, Fred, the, the, the fill irons tool works nice. Uh, the Proform Hollower works nice. All these guys, they work, they work great. I mean, that's a nice, you know, you can put, you know, when to put your hand on that and go for that, how does it feel to your hand and, and all and rolling that corner around. And all good. And then on the end here, it's still got a little, I need to put the scraper in here. Uh, put a scraper on that and clean those. You can see those tool marks right in there. That would be the last thing. I think... Um, I might have to go grab a scraper out, off the retail shelf and do that and put it into the inventory. Yeah, because it's a teardrop and pop up there. So even if I were to try and use, like, say, a carbide cutter, the round cutter, I'm still going to get some tool marks there. Whereas Go away. There we go. Um, I'm going to get some, some round marks for a teardrop scraper to clean up the inside of that. Uh, we'll do a great job and have that be all done and finished and ready to roll. Yeah. Good deal. How are we doing on time? 247. Hey, hey that's pretty good. Um, I've had a ball. If there's any questions, we've got a few minutes here before the 3 o'clock, 2 hour, two hour wrap up. Um, I'd be happy to, to answer questions here now. Uh, need to look at uh, Proform. Yep, uh, like I said, Fred, they're on sale, 25% off in the store right now uh, for the big kits. Uh, that's a great, great price. Uh, Jeff, great demo. Thank you, to, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that. What type of teardrop scraper? Uh, it's a teardrop scraper uh, from Woodcut Tools for the Proform, Don. Uh, it's one of the accessory items in the drop downs. Uh, I don't have one in here. I've got them over in the other building where the, where the product is, uh, but I don't have one here to show you. I didn't, I didn't think about it. Running around this morning doing a quick other live uh, introduction for the Expos uh, kind of threw a curve at me. Uh, not that I'm always the 100% most ready person, but hey, uh, I'm usually pretty close. So I don't have one. Uh, you can see the teardrop profile um, in the store. And if it's not a good enough image, uh, Don, let me know and I will take a picture and send it to you so you can see what the profile looks like. Oh, Hampton, absolutely. Thank you. I, I had a ball. I had a ball. Um, I always have fun out here, you know. And as usual, I believe when I wrap this up, I'm going down to the Mexican restaurant and getting myself my burrito. And then... What am I doing? Oh, I got a whole stage to build. It's going to be crazy for me getting ready uh, to go back out on the road, though I am excited. Uh, it's going to be fun. Um, woodworking Expos, brand new gig uh, to get out there, run around the countryside. Hopefully it's not like Christmas people, Christmas weather flying. Uh, I'll look into the store. Thanks. Sure, Don. If you've got any questions, you know, as usual, just give me a holler. Uh, I'll be happy to, to help you out any way I can, show you what you need to see or tell you what you need to know. Any answers I can get for you if I don't have them, happy to help. Um, all right. And I can't, it's funny. I'm looking at in the monitor now and looking at the window, uh, that mountain with the, with the, the building in the back. Oop, I'm going the wrong way. I got, it's got a house in there, actually, too. You can't quite see it for the headstock, but there's a, some kind of building there all covered in snow. 
uh, I couldn't resist. Are the Expos coming to California? Yes. Um, if you look at their website, or as a matter of fact, I can tell you because I have the cheat sheet here. In the fall, this should make you happy, uh, San Francisco on September 29 to October 1, L.A. October 6 to 8, San Diego October 13 to 15. So three stops in California. Uh, first stop in the West Coast is Seattle. Uh, middle of September, and then down to Portland. God, I remember doing all these stops uh, in the past. Uh, we, we used to go south and go, nor go south to north, but they're going north to south. So Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, L.A., San Diego, Phoenix, Denver, Oklahoma City, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, Houston. That's four Texas, four Texas events. Texas is a big state. And then wrapping up in Nashville, which is one where we've never done uh, any of the woodworking shows that, since I've been doing them in 12 years or something like that. Yes, <laughs> yes, wood turkeys, yay! Uh, yeah, and that's that's the fall. So we'll you know we'll see how it all shakes out. Uh, if everything goes well, I'll I'll go out there for the fall. Um, it sure is a lot of flying. It's a long way flying coast to coast every week. But, uh, hey, you know, if I'm having fun, it's, it's all good. Uh, I'll do it. Um, and I say they, you know, the, the, they are working on getting their vendor list together. Um, so that I don't know what they have posted. The last I looked, they didn't have vendors posted yet. They, they do have myself and Chuck Bender listed as educators. I know they are working really hard. I mean, they're emailing like crazy and contacting clubs and guilds and influencers and YouTube folks um, to bring folks in and, and all kinds of vendors. They just haven't published uh, what they've got got together yet. Um, and that's, you know, that's just something they're working on. And, and being brand new is kind of fun. It's brand new. I mean, it's never run before, uh, though they have a lot of experience. I mean, they have done over a thousand different types of trade shows um, in other markets and other products. So it's not anything that they're uh, new to is it'll be uh, interesting to see how it all runs. And Mike says, "Why we'll try for Seattle or Portland?" Uh, absolutely. And Mike, we'll, we'll see you at AAW. Hope to see a lot of you at AAW uh, after this. After I've, I put the whole uh, tour right now, I put all of this up on the Spirecraft events page, along with AAW and SWAT, so you can see where. Uh, where I'll be um, either just teaching or teaching and selling. Um, so I'm starting to get some things update, updated there. And Joe says, can you send something I can send to our local club? Uh, you mean like, Joe, as in regards to like that, forward you an email? Um, like f uh, what I'm reading here, uh, I can do that. I can forward that to you, no problem. Um, Get it, you know, get it out to you when I, I'll get it out to you after lunch, because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> but yeah, I'd be happy to get it to you. Hotel book for AAW, yeah, me too. Um, too bad we can't walk, we can't walk, too bad we can't walk to the venue at AAW, Mike. And that's the first time I think that they've had that issue, but I'm all booked up for that. Uh, yeah, Joe, I'll take care of you, I'll, I'll, I'll forward this to you, no problem. Um, looking to see if there's any other questions down in there. That are going, coming along. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to let it play the intro, outro video. And then I'm going to go get myself something to eat. So if I remember correctly, it is number six. Thanks, folks. I had a great time. Have a happy rest of your holidays. Have a happy new year. Again, I will not be here next Thursday. I will be up in the mountains of North Carolina. I might be skiing. You never know. Uh, be a radical concept. But I will see you all in two weeks uh, right here. And take care. Have a great New Year's. And that is the wrong one. Yep, I need six.